What's up guys, Nizo here. I'm back with another review slash test. This time we're checking out Star Sound's range of power cable. Starting with the CCA cable, they've got a new 4 gauge copper cable that's in a blister pack. They've got a little better quality one in a box, also 4 gauge, and then they've got a zero gauge. Let's test them all. So this is my unboxing part. A lot of people don't really like this. If you happen to be one of those, feel free to skip all the way forward. Um, there's some really cool test, actual test at the end. But for formality's sake, let's just go through this. The cable, okay, that's not supposed to be up there. That gets pushed down so that you can expose the ring terminal. The ring terminal that's on the positive side, that goes to the battery. It gets mounted onto the battery. The blister pack makes for nice presentation. That's your earth cable, neatly. That's how it was supposed to be. And then your RCAs. Um, all of us, uh, personally, I feel no need for wasting money on a blister pack just to make it look cool. But I guess some people prefer aesthetics. Okay, proper wiring kits come with fuses. We are team fuse always use a fuse. I know the SPL guys are dead against fuses, but we more into safety first. Okay, fuse, mini ANL fuse, holder, power cable, some goodies here. Okay, that's cable ties, nice to cable tie, everything secure it, ring terminals, etc. That's your this corrugated sleeve in on the earth term on the earth cable. I assume that's there just for packaging or ease of packaging because that's generally used in the engine bay front section between the battery and the fuse. Okay, then here there's some cool RCAs moving on. This is Star Sounds copper clad. This is their budget four gauge kit. I'm not a fan of copper clad, it's called CCA cable. I'm really not a fan for it, but as a lot of people will tell you, there's a place for everything. There's everything fits in some way. Let's just move that out of the way. Uh, let's take a closer look at this. Orange, cool RCAs. These are all budget packs. I'm not a fan of these ANL fuse holders particularly but this kind of fuse holder is still better than having no fuse and it's so important to have fuses I do feel that that fuse holder should have been with the other kit should have just switched it out this earth cable feels rather lightweight just move that out yeah it's not the thickest of core but it's aluminium so that's why it's it's lightweight that's all you all the kits have the exact same thing RCAs, look I, I have no idea what the quality is like but we'll check it out. Speaker cable, to be honest I'll rather use the OEM speaker cable than this. It feels not up to my standard but yeah let's move on to the next one. This kit feels a lot heavier than the other copper kit. It's also a 4 gauge power kit. It's also 100% copper like the first one that we opened up. You can feel it's heavier. Also comes with fuses. It, I think they all pretty much come with the same thing. All, all uh, power kits comes with standard goodies. Right, that's the same fuse holder. It's the exact same fuse holder in the uh, blister pack. Strange that they'd give you mini ANL fuse holders, but I do prefer that type because it's it's waterproof. I prefer the waterproof over the big ANL fuse holder that we saw in the CCA kit. Okay, this got speaker wire. This is pretty decent speaker wire. I'll actually use it. Remote wire is decent. Remote wire is remote wire. OK, 
Okay, it's also got the sleeve in similarly packed together here. Yeah, let's just separate everything here. And that's the power cable. It's got some nice weight to it. The cable on its own, it's, it feels solid. You can feel you holding a solid product here. RCAs are much better quality than the orange ones that we saw. Uh, feels good, but look, feeling an RCA doesn't really tell us how good its shielding is and so forth. But they, they look pretty decent. They're not, I wouldn't say they churn off quality, but yeah. Uh, next up, we have the zero gauge kit. So we have got this angle. It's a nice fuse holder. So that's a proper fuse holder. It looks a lot better than the other one. Uh, it's got nice cool, to, I'm gonna steal these terminals for my Zapco amplifier. I actually needed some of those. I digress, nice terminals. And let's just get this out of the way here. Okay, that's the kit. Let's open, open everything up and check out what its contents is. From what I can see, it's the same remote wire. It again, they well, they all have the exact same stuff. But the speaker wire feels stout. The speaker. Oh, I'm loving the speaker wire. It, what is this? This is 12 gauge speaker cable. That's why. And it feel it's proper copper cable, so it it feels solid. I'll actually use this. Some people actually use um, 12 gauge speaker cable for their subwoofers. I don't. I'd use 8 gauge power cable, but. I used to use big woofers, so for street woofers and that kind of stuff, you'd be fine with the, the 12 gauge. The cable itself feels solid, feels heavy, you can feel this is zero gauge in the cable. 100% copper zero gauge. There's some zero gauge on the market, I use it from time to time to be honest with you because of affordability, but the, this it feels nothing like this. The other zero gauge that I tend to use every now and again is actually more like two gauge definitely not zero gauge thicker than four gauge but definitely not zero so more like two RCAs also feel good quality same like the other set in the four gauge box decent quality so yeah there we have it there's that's the entire uh, lineup we have for today 4 gauge, 4 gauge, 4 gauge, 0 gauge, sorry for 0 gauge and yeah, th 3 or 4 different quality of cable, let's get testing and let's check out what they can deliver before we get to the actual test, I need to show you my go-to tool this is a load tester, a very important tool to have especially when you're working with high powered systems, uh, extra batteries, those kind of things. How this works is this will give you the, we'll plug the probes onto the battery and it will tell us the CCA of the battery. So that would be our starting point for the test we're going to do and I'll explain how everything works as we go along. So our first step would be to also always make sure your terminals are extremely tight if you if you happen to have the screw on tight that we use in here. I'm just using these particular uh, connectors right now purely so that we can do this test accurately. It will show you that uh, I don't know if you can see very clearly there but the battery voltage is 13.21. We'll go into it out of vehicle before charge select the type of battery flat plate CCA um, this battery doesn't really have a CCA rating, so I've just uh, keyed in a thousand. That's generally what I use. However, we're not really testing the battery itself. We're using the battery. This is all just a guideline, and you'll see how it fits together as we go along. So the first thing you need is a starting point. So starting point, let's test the CCAs when we're directly on the battery. 990 CCA at 13.21 volts it's a good battery 990 cca is it's a lot so let's move on to the next part and then you'll see how we how it all fits together if you were doing an spl 
application you would try and do or get enough wiring from the battery to your amplifier to get all of that 990 cca but that's another topic for another day if you want me to go into that just drop me a comment and i'll do so but for now let's move on to testing our cable make sure we've got a proper connection i'm actually moving removing these terminals i'm going to be using uh, bolts these bolts here okay so now we get to our first that you test the first thing we're doing is we've clamped the negative that's connected to that's connected to the negative via the supplied earth cable there's your positive via the su supplied cable right Okay, so the next thing I've done is I hooked up I hooked up the probes to the negative which is connected to the battery. I've opened up, you can't leave power cable coiled when you're testing it. So I've opened it up, I've ran it, um, stripped the end, connected it, connected it to the battery terminal. Let me just get a reading. And there we have it. It shows us that, to show if you can see the screen clearly, but it shows that the cable is able to transport 209 amps of current. Now, that's what the, the blue 4-gauge Starsound copper cable 4-gauge is able to transport. That's the one with the green. That's the one... From the blister pack this is the budget one now this is quite a good reading let's move over to the next one and let's see if there is a difference between the cable that came in the blister pack compared to the cable that came in the box let me just switch it out quickly and then we'll get back to the test starting voltage is 13.12 still testing this one is 375 so this one delivers even more power 75 amp more um, as compared to the one in the blister pack let's move on to the zero gauge and then last we're gonna do the CCA cable we've hooked up the zero gauge cable let's do our test and see what kind of what kind of power we get out of out of this Testing, testing, 575 amp. That's a lot more current. So that's basically 575 amps is the maximum current that can be drawn through this cable. Okay, for last, we hooked up the CCA 4 gauge cable. This is a budget cable. We're starting with a reading of 13.9 volts. Same battery, same everything. The results, okay, if I must be honest, I actually expected worse. I didn't expect that much current. 165 amps of current. That's the maximum current that this cable allows to pass through it. Okay, now that we've got the technical test done, let's go through the fine print or the nitty gritty. The first thing I need to tell you is the readings we achieved is not cast in stone. Those are maximum readings possible. There's a lot of variance, there's a lot of variables um, that will greatly reduce the amount of current that transfers through the cable. But this kind of gives you an idea of how much of a difference there is between CCA, your basic quality 4 gauge, your better quality 4 gauge, and then 0 gauge cable. Everything shown today is to give you an idea of how much of a difference there is between everything. If you'd like to know more about the testing methods, and there is a lot more to it, you could test so much more fuses, you could test, well, the current flow through a fuse and so forth. 
you can test so much more. If you'd like me to cover more on that, please just shout, drop me a comment, and I'll gladly do so. I do hope you enjoyed this article showcasing Starsound's new cables as well as how to measure current, uh, the amount of current that can flow through it or through any cable or through a system. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, comment. Catch you soon. Cheers, guys.